before we begin, I would like to have another prayer, okay? Just bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, we're just so thankful again to be in your house. And Lord, may my message today touch someone here as I share my testimony, Lord. We ask forgiveness for our sins and our shortcomings and help us to be ready soon for your soon return, Lord, and help us to help others get ready. In Jesus' name, we ask these things. Well, 45 years ago, I'm going to take this off, okay? Forty-five years ago, I was wearing this uniform, and if you'll notice, it's a little snug. <laughs> so I've put on a little weight since then. <laughs> so I pull this out once in a while just when I share this testimony. It was uh, 1975, March. And uh, my wife and I at the time had just made another round of churches. I had told her I'd been to a divorce before, and we'd been married about five or six years at this time. And I said, we need the Lord in our lives. And so we started visiting different churches. Every Sunday, we went to one. And every time I would come home and I would, there's, they're not, they're not, getting into here. I want to know what this says. And we were talking there for a little bit on this Sunday, and the same thing. I feel empty. I'm just not getting fed. And there, I know there's something else. And so I told her, I said, you know, I have 17 years in the Air Force at this time. Three more and I could retire. I said, I think what we need to do after I retire, three more years from now, after I retire, I'll, we'll, we'll find the Seventh-day Adventist church and try them out. Right then, there was a knock on our door. I went to the door opened it up, and here's two couples, Frank and Marcy Leggett, and Jim and Alice, Kent, what's their last, Parkos, older couples, probably younger than I am now, <laughs> but to me at the time they were older, and they said, hi, and they said, well, hi, and uh, you want to come in, and yeah, they came in, sat down, and, and I said, well, would you like something to drink? Uh, you want a beer? You want a, a Coke? Do you want a mixed drink? Or I didn't have a clue, did I? So, no, no, no. And finally, Frank, he says, uh, do you have some orange juice? <laughs> I said, yeah, we got orange juice. So we gave him all orange juice, and we visited for a little while. But I want to stop there just a minute. Why did I say, maybe we need to find the Seventh-day Adventist church and follow that? The reason being, my mother had come into the church in 1965. I went in the Air Force in 1958. So she had come in, and then she was sending me signs of the times over the years, quite a few years. Most of them I would go, I don't need that. But one time I picked one up and I was, hey, I think I'll read this article. So I read that article. Next thing I was reading them, cover to cover. Send out signs, folks. <laughs> so anyway, these people said, well, we were down in the Puyallup Church, Frank said, and uh, I gave a talk on investment. Does anybody here know what that is? I don't think we do that anymore. One of the things Frank did, he was, he was a retired cop. Uh, he had a medical retirement because of an ulcer.
but he also happened to have a cabinet shop that he made, and he made grandfather and grandmother clocks for investment. Any money he made off of those, he would turn and give to the Lord. He helped a lot of people coming through town, Brit, that needed gas or whatever. He never gave them money, but he would take them down and fill their gas tank up. They needed a hotel, he would take them down and put them in a hotel and tell the guy, if they leave, don't give the money back to them, call me, I'll get the money. So he was, what? it's God's money, isn't it? And we need to be leery of that. But anyway, he said, we were down there giving an investment talk. And uh, this, afterwards, this little white-haired lady came up to me and said, is that right? You, were, you live in Everett? And he says, yeah. He said, well, I got a son up there. Would you mind looking him up? And uh, that's how they came to our house. And it, it's the timing. Can you imagine the timing on this, how the Lord put this together? I had just said, in three years, I'm going to what? We're going to find the Seventh-day Adventist church. Right? And the Lord says, oh, no. You're going to find it right now. So anyway, uh, he said, by the way, he says, we got an evangelistic series going right now. And I would like to have you and your wife and your kids come to that. And I says, well, that's great. I said, we'd be glad to come. He said, Monday night. This was on Sunday, and I said, okay, we'll be there. Uh, now, what does Satan try to do when you've got something to go to? He always brings up, my mind had forgotten all about it. I got home and whew, had a rough day, and I said, well, pretty soon I got a phone call, and it was Frank. Now, what would have you done if you'd invited somebody to a series and they didn't show they say, oh, well, they're not interested. Isn't that what we do sometimes? Please don't do that. I'm here because he called back. OK, he called and said, oh, we missed you at the meeting. Oh, I said, well, yeah, we just forgot all about it. He said, we have another one tomorrow night. He said, you can come. And at this time, I was married to a little Korean gal. OK, I'm no longer married to her. But at this time, he had said, we have a couple here that adopted a 12-year-old Korean girl, and she is really very homesick. And it would be nice if she had somebody to talk to in her own language. And so that convinced my wife that she made, she reminded me the next night that we should go. And so we went, and we attended everyone, and were baptized in May of that year, 1975. Everything went pretty well for that for about a year. One of the other things that we did, we had a men's prayer group. Brett, you relate to this because we talked about it before. That would meet every Monday morning at 6.30 before we started our week. Now, how many of you guys would like to have something like that going? I said, guys, June, you girls get your own thing. <laughs> but anyway. You know, us guys, we're kind of, I don't, I don't know what it is about it. Women can get together and do things. But one of the things that really blessed me was going to that men's group every Monday morning before I start my week. And I think that's something that we'd like to see us do, too. We studied and studied. One of the guys had a nice HMS Richards Bible with the HMS Richards helps in the back. So about a year, maybe a little over a year, after we become Seventh-day Adventists, all of a sudden, our office, I'm a recruiter now. That's what that says there, that thing, Air Force recruiter. He said, we're going to start opening the offices on Saturday. And you'll have to be in here on Saturday from now on. Well, right away, I went to the, to the NCOIC, non-commissioned officer in charge. <laughs> I said to him, I, I can't do that. I said, I can come in on Sunday, I'd be fine. He said, well, pretty soon he drugged the other two recruiters in there with him. And they started in on me. <laughs> well, you can, uh, you can come in for an hour or two, just part of the day. I said, no, that's not going to work. He said, well, we'll call your pastor. We'll get permission from him for you to come in on Saturday. I said, that's fine. You go ahead and call him. but." 
I said, I don't care what he says. I'm going by what it says in here. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, right? And so they saw they weren't getting any was Well, you only got, by this time, two and a half years to go to retire. Don't you think you could be some way we could work this out? He says, and then I started getting threats with going to, uh, uh, what's the name of that fort back there? You probably remember that, Steve, the one where they put all military prisoners in Kansas. What is it? Leavenworth. Leavenworth. He says, well, if you don't do as you're told, then you'll probably get to go to Leavenworth. If that's what the Lord wants, that's fine with me. If I'm going to follow him. He, well, you're going to lose out your retirement. I said, the Lord's got a better retirement. Doesn't he? Huh? He's got a better, I mean, I get to live forever? Come on. And I get a house of my own. I get to build my own house in the country. What's the problem? So they saw they weren't going to get anybody. Finally, I told my supervisor, look, what we're going to do is you make an appointment for me to see the commander. Okay. And... Uh, but it'll be between him and I, and we'll keep you out of this so you don't get in trouble. So they made an appointment. So I had to go down. We were up in Everett, Washington, so I had to go down to, uh, starts with a B, not Bothell, but down for the Bremerton. Or, no, it wasn't Bremerton, but anyway, that's where our headquarters was. So I had to go down there. And of course, before I left, I said, on our morning group, we had that before. I says, uh, could I borrow your HMS Richards Bible? Because in the back is all of these wonderful texts on the Sabbath. He borrowed it to me, and I wrote them all down on a piece of paper. I was a new Christian, OK? A new Adventist Christian. So, But I was being prepared. Be prepared. huh? So I wrote all these texts down, and I put them in my uniform shirt pocket. And uh, I got down there to, to see the commander, waited, waited, waited. Of course, they would like to make you sweat a little bit. Finally, he calls me in, tells me, you know, I went in, I reported in. And, and he said, take a seat, Sergeant Cooser, he says. And I said, OK. And we talked for quite a little bit. And he said, you know, When I was in college, I roomed with the Seventh-day Adventist. Oh, really? Now, is that good or bad news? Huh? I could go either way, couldn't it, folks? Was he a dedicated Seventh-day Adventist? Or was he just going along with the, huh? He, apparently, he was dedicated. Because the next statement out of his mouth was, I know what you believe. Someday, when we get to heaven, I hope to meet this guy. <laughs> Thank you for your witnessing. A lot of times we don't realize, folks, people are watching us, OK, all the time. And so he said, well, I know what you believe. So here's what we're going to do. He said, I've already talked to the general. And he threw it back in my lap as to what to do with you, since you won't work on Sabbath. And so he said, well, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to send you down to Seattle <clears throat> to the Armed Forces Examination and Entrance Station, where you have to go through and they strip you and you, they check you and see if you're a healthy person or not and all of that. And uh, I was to work down there for the next couple of months till my orders came through. I had a great idea. I said, you know, we just bought this home up here. And Frank Lay has this cabinet shop. He's going to be retiring soon. And uh, he promised to check me out on how to make cabinets and stuff. See, I was planning all this ahead and what the Lord, yeah, we can do this. So I went down to McCord Air Force Base. And I went into the lab. That's where I used to work as a precision measurement equipment laboratory. Calibrates everything in the Air Force inventory. OK, electronics, weights and measures, everything traceable back to the National Bureau of Standards. So I walked into the lab there, and I talked to the NCOIC. I says, 
uh, how are you guys doing here as far as personnel? Do you need help? Oh, man, he says, we're, yeah, we need help. And I says, well, uh, they're going to be moving me from recruiting back to my old field. And this would be ideal for me because I could work here, stay at my folks' home in Puyallup there for during the week and then go back home on the weekends. That would work out great. I will go do that for two years and I could retire. I had it all figured out. You know, but sometimes the Lord has other plans. <laughs> so anyway, what they ended up, I uh, went back. After, oh, I told him, I said, look, by the way, I said, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist. And from sundown Friday until sundown Saturday, I'm not going to do any work. Okay, I won't be available, period. You know, if you get Sundays or anything like that, I'm ready. So he said, no problem. He says, I need you. So, yeah. So I went back and I felt pretty comfortable about that. Yeah, we got, I had it all figured out. Everything. Going. Pretty soon my orders came through. I'm living in Washington State. Who do you think my orders were for? As far away as you can get in the CONUS, almost, except for Florida. They sent me clear across to Maine. I said, you got to be kidding me. I wrote my congressman. I said, this is ridiculous. I said, they have openings down here at McCord Air Force Base. You're going to pay to move me and my family all the way across the United States. Two years, you're going to send me all the way back. Think of the money you could save by letting me stay here in my house, go down there and work, and come back every year. It, it makes sense. Doesn't that make sense? Does our government always make sense? <laughs> Said, I'm sorry, you got to go. So I said, okay. I had to go. I had a house. I had to sell that. I had an extra car I had to get rid of. The house sold just like that. So I think the Lord wants me to do this. The next thing, I had a little trouble selling the car. And so I moved down with the family before I left to visit some time with my parents in Puyallup. And I said, hey, I'll put that ad in the paper in Tacoma. I'm, it's a big old old store in auto, 19, big, it's 1969, nice car, 454 or something like that in it. Beautiful ride, but we had to get rid of it because it was just too many vehicles and my wife didn't drive. So I put an ad in, and this gentleman comes with his family. He called and said, I'm interested in your car. He brought us, he had two kids, I think it was. And he looked it all over. He said, tell me everything is wrong with it. And I said, well, there's this dent in the side. That happened in Texas, coming back from recruiting school. Long story. I'm not going to get into it now. But I told him everything about it. And how it made. He said, this is just exactly what we're looking for. And it's right the same price rate. We'll give you just what you're asking. And he ended up that he was a Baptist preacher. And he'd been praying for this car. I'd been praying to get rid of it. Isn't it neat how the Lord puts stuff together? Right at the last minute, they sold the house, sold the car, made somebody else happy with the car, and on we went. So boom, back to, I'm in Maine now. So we have a new, I got a new supervisor now, okay? Chief Master Sergeant, uh, I think I got his name here. Campbell was his name. White-haired guy. <laughs> Mine wasn't then. I had a little more of it. It was dark. And he said, uh, welcome. Glad you're here. And I says, before I even start work, you and I need to have a talk. <laughs> As I said, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist Christian. And I says, and, and get, get, now you have to understand the situation here, folks. This is Strategic Air Command. You had the big bombers, B-52s. When I was in Strategic Air Command before, we had alerts once a month at least, okay? Everybody had to be on base. You might be there for three or four days. Doesn't matter, Sunday, Saturday, it didn't make a bit of difference. I'm back in SAC, Strategic Air Command again. So I'm telling him that I got to be off on Saturday, Friday, sundown Friday, sundown Saturday. And he, you could just see the blood start coming up and his face start to get red. And I, I said, oh boy, he's going to blow. <laughs> and I said, Sergeant Campbell, 
must make this between me and the commander. You make an appointment for me to see him. I don't want to put this pressure all on you. And so he made an appointment. This guy, <clears throat> the commander is about, I was 5'11 then. He was about 6'4, six, 6'5. Six, Big guy. I'm getting there this way, but I'm not <laughs> But anyway, he made an appointment, went in there and saw him. I explained the same thing to him. And I said, look, if something comes up, that there's an alert. I said, I'd be more than happy to go over and work in the hospital and help people with the bedpans or whatever. But I said, I'm not going to be doing this job on the Sabbath. And this was on a Friday. And he said, well, you're the chief and I, the commander says, we'll talk this over. And we'll get back to you on Monday. OK. Monday came around. I went in. And the chief was still, he didn't like this at all. You could see the smoke still coming out of his ears. He was <laughs> a little upset. And he said, well, Kuzer, here's what we're going to do. We're going to put you in charge of quality control. You check all the equipment that's coming out, OK? And uh, you name your own hours. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. So I said, OK, that sounds great. So what happened next? Well, in the, to get into this career field in the first place, when I was, went into it, you had to be an E4 with over four years of service. You had to have a background in electronics, which I had, because I worked on the bombing and navigation systems on B-52s before. And then you had to take a test, which it took me twice. I had to take it twice to pass it the first time I failed. It was a rough test. So that, that was the pre the requirements to get into the field. And then all of a sudden, somebody came up with the great idea of grabbing new kids out of ba basic training, running them through our school, and bringing them up. Well, we had about five or six of these young guys in there. And when I started checking the equipment coming out, it was not looking good. We were failing a lot of them. And I'd had to send it back to them to redo. So meanwhile, just before this, I had a performance report due. Sergeant, uh, the chief master sergeant came to me and says, here's your performance report. Do you want to look it over? I says, fine. I looked at it. And I says, I've had nothing. I says, I noticed you rating me down in two areas here. I says, can you explain that? And uh, he said, well, you told me you wouldn't work on Sabbath. OK. But what does that say at the top of the paper? It says performance report. Have you ever asked me to work on Sabbath? Well, no, but you said. I said, no, no, you, you don't understand. It's a, this is a performance. How am I doing my job? Am I doing a good job? And I said, I don't care what you put on there, but for the next guy that comes behind me, remember that. It's a performance report. It's what the man does for you. Did you do a good job? Yeah. So anyway, I had nothing but nines before, but I have rated down on those two areas. Nine is outstanding. So we, after that conversation, then, then this issue come up with these young people feeling equipment coming out. And so I told, went to the chief. I said, look, we got a problem back here. I said, a lot of this equipment that's coming out from the young people back here is not passing. OK, I've gone through and checked the equipment, and it's bad. We got airplanes out there. There's just equipment's used now, and we could lose a life if this stuff is not calibrated right. And he said, well, OK, don't worry about it. Well, the inspector general came in, found the same thing that I found, and closed this down. The chief come to me and says, Wayne, what can we do? I said, well, we need to set up an OJT on the job training program. I said, I'd be happy to do that. And he said, do it, please. So I did. I set it up. The IG came back in about two or three months. We passed, no problems. Uh, went back. Uh, we were getting, at this time, I was getting close to retirement, so I put in my papers. <clears throat> and I 
was waiting there for my papers. And we had a commander's call come up about two weeks before I retired. And I was called up to the front during the commander's call. And Cindy, you can put that picture up now. That's me on the right there. That big guy, I was 5'11". You can tell how big this guy is. He was, that was our commander. And his Lieutenant Colonel Elston was his name. So he put, he put something on my chest there. Do you see that? That's that ribbon up here in the top. It's called an Air Force Commendation Medal. Now, who do you think put me in for that? My crusty old chief master sergeant that hated my guts. But that really meant something to me. Somehow, I, my being there softened his heart that he wanted to give this to me. I mean, the medal doesn't mean it. I don't care about that, but just to be recognized that you know, I was able to witness to this man. People are watching us all the time, folks. There, is this really a real, I want to see a real Christian and what he's like. Do you really follow the Lord all the way? So we need to do that, each one of us. God bless you. We're going to have prayer. Sorry. Used to having a song afterwards. <laughs> Let's have prayer. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you again for your loving kindness and how you've led in the past in each of our lives, Lord. And we ask that we remember those things, Lord, so that we'll be able to praise you at all times for the way you're not only lead, led us in the past, but you're leading in the future, Lord. Help us to be ready for your soon coming. In Jesus' name, amen.